So are you looking for the best values or best neighborhoods that are the best bang for buck prices uh, in all of Virginia Beach? Well, that's what we're doing today. We're talking the top five neighborhoods that are the best values in Virginia Beach starting right now. Hey, my name is Sam Santalone and I'm a real estate agent in the Hampton Roads area. That includes Virginia Beach and it goes through Williamsburg and I do videos every week about living and moving to the area. So I'm gonna talk today about five of the areas that I think are often overlooked undervalued uh, and i think that depending on what price range you're in you might find some spots here that you might like for very specific reasons very unique things about these neighborhoods that are very hard to find and again this goes through a wide variety of price ranges so number one is going to be if you're looking for beach access and this neighborhood is called aries on the bay well first of all you look at the map you'll see virginia beach is big you see a lot of beach access on the east side but on the north side you'll see chicks beach chicks beach is right next to the chesapeake bay bridge tunnel and there's a lot of beach access up and down uh, this section closer headed up towards the Lesnar Bridge right here. Well, just west of the Lesnar Bridge, there's a little section, a townhouse neighborhood, kind of a hidden gem here called Aries on the Bay. And the reason why I like Aries on the Bay so much is that, number one, it is very close to Shore Drive, which is one of the main uh, roadways. It goes all the way, connects to the eastern side of Virginia Beach and over towards Norfolk. That's a big benefit as far as commuting goes back and forth to work. And number two is that I love the fact that you don't really know it's even back here. There aren't too many people that even know that Aries on the Bay exists. So one of the benefits to being in Aries on the Bay is that you have beach access that is you literally can walk from the neighborhood into the beach there's areas in the bay park that's just off of next to the neighborhood so you can literally walk from your street in neighbors areas in the bay and walk onto the beach i mean literally a matter of minutes walking and so one of the issues with a lot of parts of virginia beach is that while you have beach access not all of it is easy to get to for example you might have issues with parking in a lot of parts of virginia beach getting to the beach unless you live on the water and also too, even if you live close to the water, sometimes walking to the beach from your house can be hard because you might be crossing major roadways. Aries in the Bay is one of those neighborhoods, one of the most affordable uh, in any part of Virginia Beach that allows you walkable access from the same side of the street uh, as the beach is. So you don't have to walk across major roadways to get to the beach. And of course, it means that parking is easier for you as well. Now, the drawback to one of this neighborhood also is that parking can be a challenge in general. It's not a very big neighborhood. So be careful knowing that if you have a ton of cars or you want a bunch of people parking around here, it's, this is not a, one of those, those spots. Now, the houses in here are townhouses. Like they're usually two bedroom or three bedroom houses. And you'll see them anywhere from the 400s up into the five mostly and some detached houses a small little section in the back of the neighborhood close to the beach uh, those are three or four bedrooms closer to the 2,000 square feet range there are a few detached houses in the front of the neighborhood that are in the right around the 600s uh, price range but in the back of the neighborhood there's another strip of uh, single-family houses and those don't sell very often but when they do they're gonna be selling anywhere from like the mid six hundred thousand dollar price range upwards into the mid seven even close to eight hundred thousand dollars up and they were built in the 80s mid 80s so you'll find that you'll see a lot of typical 80s style construction in areas on the bay you have several a lot of uh, restaurants up and down shore drive and you can take that road on shore drive all the way over to the ocean front as well if you wanted to go that way and you're only about 10 plus minutes away to a first landing state park which is the largest uh, uh, park in Virginia Beach and if you look over I'll show you how big it is it's gigantic and it takes up all the area underneath Fort Story in the north north part of the ocean front and another benefit here is that there is no condo fee now there is a catch to that it's not a condo it's a townhouse and you own the house however there is a Civic League you can pay a voluntary fee to the Civic League but there are covenants attached to the property when you buy the house there are things you have to abide by similar to what you would you would in an hoa uh, for example things like colors on the siding the roof color specific things like that that uh, the, the civic league helps maintain and ensure that the neighborhood is preserved in the way that it originally was built in addition to that you can't do airbnbs here short-term rentals are not allowed in here even if the city uh, says that they might change their rules the covenants uh, in areas in the bay prohibit that from uh, being possible before you buy anything in areas in the bay i would definitely suggest researching this go online and check the areas on the bay civic league all the information about the things that they have for restrictions and guidelines uh, because there is no hoa so you don't have hoa docs that you would order when you're buying the house okay. so that leads me to number two which going down south closer to town center that's where this neighborhood is and it's one of my favorites larkspur and if you see on the map you'll see that you see town center first of all and going coming from areas in the bay 
all the way down, almost straight down south, you'll see the town center area, which I have, I have uh, referenced in many videos and did a video about town center. It's great to be close to town center, and that's where Larkspur has an awesome benefit. Going down south, just underneath the uh, 264 interchange, the neighborhood just south of the interchange right here, which is Larkspur. And so Larkspur, these houses were built mostly in the late 60s in that range, and they were built right off of the Kempsville Greens, the golf course, which is just next to Larkspur. And so you'll see some houses up along uh, the golf course, which is kind of cool. But as you uh, work away from the golf course, you'll see a lot of these houses are ranch. You'll see a ton of ranch style houses in here. And so if you want one story, this is a great spot to look into. But they also have two story, a good mixture. But as you drive through this neighborhood, it's so quiet. It's so like full of foliage, full of trees, lots of shade. You open your windows and you hear the leaves uh, rustle back and forth. The, 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 the neighborhood atmosphere is very rich and extremely quiet and peaceful, which is unique because being in this neighborhood, right next to it is Independence Boulevard, which is extremely busy. You're very close to major roadways, but also it feels like you're tucked away away from uh, all the action that's close to you, especially town center a few minutes away. And you're also close to places like Wegmans, my favorite grocery store. It's like only like five, six minutes away. You got the Walmart, Target, uh, all the essentials and plenty of good restaurants that are very, very close to. So the house prices in here are in the 400s and 500s mostly. I'm seeing them push into the six range and I'm seeing them still kind of hang around the low fours if you're like, for example, a smaller one, 1,500 square feet, maybe in a neighborhood right next to Larkspur. There's neighborhoods called Larkspur Meadows, which is a, a smaller one, like a you know, 15, 16, 1700 square feet. You might see them in the 400 price range, but the location and proximity is the thing that is most interesting here. I love this spot. And again, it's super, super quiet. So you get a balance of type of house, a style of house, uh, and a quiet atmosphere, as well as also access to plenty of stuff. And for the price that you might have to pay a hundred thousand dollars more over in the great neck or little neck. So, which is why I like this area as well. Not to mention you're across the street from Mount Trashmore, one of the other big uh, large uh, uh, parks in Virginia Beach. So you can literally walk across Independence from Larkspur, get there in, in a few minutes, and you can do laps around Mount Trashmore, nice lake over there. I love being close to that, and it gives you access to more exercise spots, not to mention just being able to walk in the neighborhood. Even though there are no sidewalks, it's so quiet, you really don't think you really need it. I'd say the drawback to being in Larkspur, I would say, is the houses closest to Independence, you can hear a lot of noise coming off of Independence, and so it can get very loud because it is close to a major roadway. But it's funny, once you come off of two or three blocks, away you don't notice any of it so now now we're going to shift over into great neck well we talked about the affordability of larkspur away from great neck well now we're going right into the heart of great neck which is in a neighborhood that is called baycliff and if you look at uh, uh great neck this is great neck this is little neck great neck right here Allenton is one of the most exclusive neighborhoods that is in Great Neck and actually Virginia Beach, which is right here along the Lincoln Bay. But just next to it, this little peninsula, boop, it pop out right here. This is Baycliff. And Baycliff has, has a lot of ranch style, but a mixture, a blend of one story and two story house. This neighborhood is awesome. It's also another one of those little spots where you don't really think that this even neighborhood even exists. You think Allenton, you think of Great Neck, you just don't really pay attention to the fact that Baycliff is right there. This neighborhood, I'd say, is more up into the, really starting in the sixes and sevens, but you don't see too many in that price range. You're starting to see them now, now into the eight. Uh, waterfront is gonna be much higher than that, over a million dollars. But this is still a value for what you get. You get the size of house. These houses are gonna be 2000s, 3000s square feet and up. Good family style house, four or five bedrooms uh, plus. That's one thing, a lot of brick houses in here. And also you're in Great Neck, so you have the accessibility of Great Neck, uh, like for example, Hilltop, going further south, you're only like, 10-ish minutes away from Hilltop with all the restaurants and stores, you know, Wegmans, Trader Joe's, all the great uh, restaurants like Aldo's, Azar's, The Melting Pot, a lot of great restaurants in Hilltop. And you're close to the, the hospital. So if you want to be, be close to medical care, this is not too far away. Again, you're only a few minutes away from Centura Virginia Beach General, which is, you know, just south of Baycliff. And also, in addition to that, the lot sizes in Baycliff are very nice. So you feel a little bit more spread out for uh, what you get uh, in Baycliff compared to other places in the center of Virginia Beach. In addition to that, you also have a boat ramp that is on the southwestern uh, side uh, of Baycliff. As you drive into the, the neighborhood, the neighbors, uh, the neighborhood paid to put a boat ramp in for the neighborhood. And so that in and of itself is a value that's very hard to find. You can push off from there into the broad bay. I love that aspect uh, of this neighborhood. 
you tell me where else you can find that very easily. I love this. And the drawback to Baycliff is really the price. But again, that's why you can pivot to a place like Larkspur, get a house in the fours and fives and get some real nice vibes uh, and close to a lot of stuff as well, similar to what you can get in Great Neck. So shifting across the bay, this one, <laughs> this is a nook and cranny that is a diamond in the rough in spades is called Princess Anne Hills. So you hear a lot about uh, Bay Colony, which is just next to Princess Anne Hills. So you see the Crystal Lake there. You see the beach there. People like to drive, ride their bikes into Bay Colony and go, you know, through uh, near the Princess Anne Country Club, going up towards the north end. But as you go up and down the north end, uh, there's a little bit of a little peninsula that juts away from Atlantic Avenue. This is called Princess Anne Hills. So one of the benefits I like about this neighborhood is it's got hills. So if you don't like hills, not necessarily a good thing. If you like hills, this is the one spot where you can kind of find them. And you're close to places where you can bike. You can bike and walk all the way over to the beach very easily, cross over Atlantic Avenue. And you also have access to the, to the bay on the other side. So if you have a house on the water on the bay, which those are gonna be well over a million dollars, uh, pushing into the twos close to at this point, but if you have a, a house on that side, you have access not only to the Atlantic Ocean side, but also the Bay side, which is very hard to find as well. Because uh, Bay Colony is great, but it's a big neighborhood. So it's harder to get out of the neighborhood by bike or uh, walking compared to a place like Princess Anne Hills. You can pop over it a little bit easier. The drawback is gonna be those hills that, that some, some not everybody's gonna wanna walk those hills. But these are gonna be really unique houses too. You'll see every house is different. They're gonna be often up high up because of the hills. You'll see some like in the two, 3,000 square foot range. You'll see them in the 4,000 square foot range. They're big. Again, some of these are really exclusive on the water. $2 million plus in a lot of these spots, closer to three sometimes. But as you go off the water, uh, you get closer to a million dollars, which again, for a big house, three, 4,000 square feet, 2,800 square feet in a neighborhood like Princess Anne Hills that's so exclusive, uh, that's very hard to find. I helped someone get a house in Princess Anne Hills recently, uh, just over a million dollars. And a lot of these houses are more like 1.5, 1.3, 1.7. So if you can find one, especially in the lower end of that 1 million price range or even under, which could exist, I would go after Princess Anne Hills because uh, it's very hard to find this type of neighborhood this close to the, the ocean front, but also close to the bay too. And also on top of that, you're very close to the First Landing State Park entrance. Okay, I'll zoom out and I'll show you on the map. So you see here, there's, there's Princess Anne Hills right here. Come out, turn on Atlantic Avenue, 64th Street entrance is right here. There's the trail, Cape Henry Trail can take this all the way through. It's a big park. So you're close to that too. So the nature, the beach, this is seclusion away from the Atlantic Avenue too. So you're not close to all the tourists if you don't like that. Great balance for everything. But again, you're paying for it, just over a million dollars, but I think it's worth it. Now the drawback about Princess Anne Hills really is the price. It's just expensive. You're starting at a million dollars. You're going up to two plus a uh, million. Uh, but if you're okay with that, again, you're getting a lot for it. So again, it's kind of a balance of how important is price compared to what you're going to get access to the beach. But now we're going to go to what if you want a house that has great rental income options. And it's also in a neighborhood that's very, very in demand for a lot of people it is Ocean Lakes going down to the far southeast part of Virginia Beach. Close to the Oceania Naval Air Station is Ocean Lakes. Now, I love Ocean Lakes because it's, it's a big neighborhood, but you have a lot of options of different styles of houses. So you have townhouses in the upper 200s and 300s price range. You've got, you've got uh, single family houses in the upper threes and fours price range. You have other uh, single family houses in like the closer to the five range, but these are all close to the Oceania Naval Air Station. So right over here, south of Dan Neck Road and near Upton Drive, all in this area, you'll see it's loaded with houses in Ocean Lakes. Lakes. This is an HOA. You got pool and park access, but you also are close to the Ocean and Naval Air Station. Number one, you're also you're not too far away, also from the ocean front, which is where all the tourist stuff is up north. So that's not far away. You're close to Croatan, another beach access. You're also close to Sandbridge, which is an underrated part of, of Virginia Beach that most people don't think they're close to. And it's true. If you're in Virginia Beach, you're often not close to Sandbridge. But Ocean Lakes is only like about 16, 17, 18 minutes away from Sandbridge. If you look, Sandbridge is in the corner of Virginia Beach. It takes a long time to get there from most of Virginia Beach. But being that close from Ocean Lakes down to Sandbridge, it's a, just a benefit. It, like going to a destination beach only 20, 15 to 20 minutes away is so awesome. And one of the few neighborhoods in this price range, like the threes to fives that really can get this, this fast to Sandbridge. 
So in addition to that, you're in Ocean Lakes High School District, which is awesome for rental opportunity. People love being in Ocean Lakes School District. And so you can buy the house in here, whether it be 300,000, 500,000, anywhere in that price range, and be able to rent it very easily and get a premium rent for this as well because of the Ocean Lakes School District and also being close to Oceana Naval Air Station. Now, the drawback to being in Ocean Lakes is that the jet noise is going to be relatively annoying. I see a lot of a lot of parts. I say the noise is not I've seen it worse. I've heard it worse, but it's very, very noticeable. And so I would definitely know if you want an area like this, but you're concerned about jet noise, this might not be the right neighborhood uh, to go to. So if you have any more questions about relocating to Virginia Beach or the rest of Hampton Roads, the area from Virginia Beach through Williamsburg, let me know. That's what I do. I love helping people relocate to this area. So if you have any questions, I have my contact information in the description. You can reach out at any point and I'll do whatever I can to help you relocate to the area and I will see you on the next video.